scarily high pheasants at the Welsh oh, Tall Bird Specialist, the famous Harry Brigands shoot. And we are there with Ross Neville. More sedate sport, bro stalking in Scotland and the English home counties with Baron Pace and friends. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. It is the long walkout to Tommy's. For even the keenest pheasant shots in the country, high birds are daunting, and you will struggle to find consistently higher birds than this drive on this shoot. Charlie, today we're at Brigands, the famous mighty Brigands with Bettis Hall. We start on my favourite drive, which is Tommy's, which uh, is, is pretty much you know, the best drive in the country with Grise Mountain at Lake Widigar. I am very excited to be shooting it. Ross Neville has taken a gun on Brigands today, and he and his loader and instructor and friend Hugo Hurd are the kids in the sweet shop as the drive starts. However, these first challenging birds are causing Ross problems. He is shooting them, but not as many as he would like. You can't want any of this on film, Charlie. <laughs> ah. you got, you've just got to get into the groove, haven't you? Yeah, and it's very rare for me to be out of the groove. And I'm trying all sorts of things, and it bloody working. hey -o. we'll rock and roll. Good shot. You know, I'm trying to head much further on the stock because it feels like it's coming off. Um, I'm going more lead, less lead, just seeing what's happened. And funny enough, it was gun speed on that last bird that knocked it down. So it might be just one of those little things of just gun speed. And the margin of error on these birds is so minute. This morning we've come here, Ross on form, feeling good, thinking it's going to be the same. It wasn't the same. Over, over, Ross, over, over. Those birds were 85 to 120 yards high. Head down, concentrate on the head of the bird. Coming at us, coming at us. Get some gun speed, wake up your left hand, get hold of the gun, concentrate, concentrate, see a gap and push on and keep finishing the shot off. Nothing wrong with missing that. <laughs> Very important to finish the shot off, not come off after the first shot with head and stop, keep on and keep the gun moving. By drive two, the Oaks, Ross is feeling more godlike. I am back in the game. You know, you do need to be relaxed and enjoy yourself. And just on the last drive, I just didn't. You know, I, I enjoyed it, but guess what? You know, it's not easy and I just proved it's not. Some of this is due to the cartridges. At Lechwidigar, a few episodes ago, Ross was suffering from damp fobs. This time, Hugo has gone for a pre-dried brand, meaning there is less unburnt powder left down the barrel. We've gone on to trying some new cartridge from Fiocchi, Excellence Pheasant, which are a nickel-coated lead pellet coated in nickel. Now that says 36 gram on there. We're giving that a go and it's a five and a half size shot. We need to be putting all the lead, all the nickel, up the front end of the bird. As well as trying different cartridges, Ross is swapping guns for us today. He normally shoots a pair of Krikovs, but he has a soft spot for Marukus, and we have brought a pair for him to try. The gun I was using today, MK60 Sport, um, you know what, just as I said at Lake Widigar, probably the best entry-level pair of guns you can buy on the market. They're the right weight, uh, they look the part, 32 inch, and they can hit the big boys. And as long as you've got the right chokes in them. And what was interesting today is we were using, as you know, a Fiocchi cartridge. Um, and it just really, really worked very nicely. So the sort of Maruku uh, Fiocchi combination did a good job. At the price they are, 
The engraving's lovely. Um, the look and feel of them is is great. You know, they're a heavier gun, so they can do the job for these these big high birds. And certainly, if anyone's you know wanting to get into these sort of 300 plus days and wants to buy a pair of guns, this is what I would start out with. The only thing I would change on it is, um, you know, it is the back of the gun. Um, I would put a Kiki's, Kiki's pad on there. Yeah. And the, the pair that I first bought five years ago, that's exactly what I did to them, and it just softens it up a bit, and then you can put some weighty cartridges through it. You know, I used to use 32, I will use 34, and obviously I'm using 36 this week. Um, but I just think that's, that's more than enough. And you know, there's some great shooters out there using 32 grams and they'll do the job. You just, as, you, as I said the last time, you've got to put it in the head. Now you see a lot of birds go over on a shoot like this and you see several of them come down. So what happens to the birds that are shot? First up, they get collected by the pickers up and it's hard to know if they or their dogs are more enthusiastic. I mean, I've worked here now for what, 17 years? And uh, it is hard going, uh, but the dogs just love it. Then the birds go to the game dealer. Not all of them, however. Between drives, Brigands serves up freshly shot pheasants. This, this bird has been shot five minutes ago, so you don't get fresher than this. Fresh pheasant. There we go, happy days. The meat goes to the other end of the vehicle where the Brigands' chef has set up a barbecue. Uh, I've just floured and uh, it's got some like Cajun seasoning on some uh, pheasant goujons and then we're just going to shallow fry them. How long do you fry them for? Oh, a couple of minutes. The man helping Ross with the pheasants there is Richard Crofts, who runs the brigand shoot for super shoot operator Bettis Hall. The shooting is just part of the day for us. The hospitality, the um, you know making things run as smoothly as possible, but certainly the hospitality, the food, and just sort of topping out, you know, topping everybody's drinks up and just making going that extra mile just to make it special. We try and give our guests an experience that you know is perhaps some of the highest birds in the country. Maybe not the highest, but some of the highest. Um, the beautiful thing about the brigands as well is nothing is flies true here, you know. Um, so when they're coming off the tops, the sliding, the diving, they're making very, very difficult, challenging shooting. You know, whereas perhaps in Devon, arguably they'll be as high, if not higher, than here, but they do tend to fly a little bit truer and a little bit straighter. As well as Tommy's, one of the great drives here is waterfall. Ross loves it for the unpredictability of the birds. It's, it's doing everything different all the time. So it is really, if you can get on well at Waterfall, you're doing very, very well. Oh, good shot! Good shot! Good shot! Very good Very shot. nice! We have shot some of the greatest drives in British-driven shooting today. Ross has enjoyed the lows, the highs, and the positively stratospheric of pheasant shooting, and in the company of his father, who has been following the action all day. Now one tradition we have to complete, and that's to make a joke about butts for Ross's seven-year-old son, Winston, who is not here today. Let's see if we can con Grandad. What do you call that end of the gun? The butt. What's it called again? The butt. That's for you, Winston. <laughs> for more about the Marukus, visit the Browning website, browning.eu. And to go shooting at Brigands, contact Bettis Hall. Thank you once again to Ross and thank you to the team from Bettis Hall for looking after us. Now, from the highest in the sky to the lowest in the land, it's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Scotland's ruling Scottish National Party has committed to ending dog work and grouse shooting in Scotland. Delegates at the party's National Council voted to licence grouse shooting estates in Scotland. Plus it wants to limit all hunting with dogs to just two dogs, making both fox hunting and picking up more difficult. The RSPB welcomes the announcement on grouse shooting. The Scottish Government also plans to halve the number of wildlife and deer managers at Forestry Commission Scotland. 
There are fears that Nicola Sturgeon's deer killing copters will be cleared for takeoff following the staff cull. Gamekeepers and landowners are worried that with a lack of direction, it will lead to a government quick fix. So Nicola's policy of wiping out thousands of red deer will move to the air, as well as shooting out of season and at night. Perhaps the better idea would be the government working with local deer management groups. Even the RSPB has criticised the job cuts. The gang of academics that helped Tony Blair ban hunting and mishandle the foot and mouth crisis is alive and well. They're to be found at the Royal Society and lately at London Zoo. They include Professor Sir Roy Anderson, who led the foot and mouth cull, and late Professor Sir Patrick Bateson, who successfully got stag hunting banned on National Trust land in the 1990s. They typically produce research supporting the killing of livestock, but are against killing wildlife. Now one of them, Rob Nell, who edits London Zoo's journal, has used his position at Queen Mary College, University of London, to put out research showing that hunting trophy animals could lead to a species extinction. His research chooses to ignore the management culls that go into herd management so that a single large animal can be shot. Game Boar is the UK's most popular cartridge. That's the conclusion of research by Strutt and Parker, sponsored by Guns on Pegs and JustCartridges.com. The estate agent asked 11,000 shooters which cartridge they use, and 27% of them said Game Boar. Hull is in second place at 23, and Ely Hawk is third at 22. Basque has launched new insurance to cover bird flu. Basque and insurer AIM Risk Services are offering shoots in a stage shoot cancellation cover due to bird flu. This follows the same insurance package launched in the autumn by Shoot Protect. And finally, someone has handed in Clint Eastwood's MP40. The submachine gun he used in the 1968 film Where Eagles Dare ended up in Bridgewater Police Station during a UK gun amnesty. Happily, the police will not destroy it. Instead, they're sending it to the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. More harrowing tales from the world of field sports. Thank you, David. It's getting quite hard to tell the difference between our politicians and violent extremist antis. Now, put down your pitchforks and pick up your popcorn, because here's a film introducing the Zeiss hunting app. Thank you for watching that. It pays for the sand in the arena. Next up, we are putting a Mauser rifle through its paces on Roe Deer. In December 2015, we were there when Mauser's man in the UK got the factory in Germany to rework and customise the Mauser M12 for the British market. And so was born the M12 Impact, a reasonably priced rifle that's accurate out to a thousand yards. We tested it with Andrew Venables at WMS's shooting range in West Wales against a 338 sniper rifle, and it worked. Boom! <laughs> now, you wanted to make a thousand metre stalking rifle, didn't you? Well, you lunatic, you've done it. Finding somewhere safe to shoot a thousand yards is hard enough, so most impacts, though capable, are more typically used out to one-tenth of that distance. Rifle reviewer Byron Pace from Scotland stalks his deer with one. It's back in the summer and he is today after a roebuck with a carnivore. Nothing strange about someone going deer stalking who enjoys eating meat, but journalist Louise Gray is an ethical carnivore, according to the title of her book. In the book, Louise discusses the ethics of only eating the meat of animals she has killed herself. She describes killing your own animals as beyond intimate. It is primal. What I found most satisfying was sharing mm. the meat with other people. So. Um, venison obviously is a huge amount of meat and I shared most of it and I always had this great satisfaction in sharing it with people and I think that that's universal I think that's what people call hunter's pride you know mm. um, bringing the meat back to the table and it's quite empowering as well and I think it's quite a natural urge to want to go out and get meat for other people and to share it the farmer's daughter is no stranger to hunting and gathering, so is possibly not surprised when Byron's roebuck disappears in the late sunshine. 
Over the past two years, the impressive machines at Mauser have been pumping out the M12s and they have sold well in the UK. Someone that knows that all too well is Rupert Blackwall of RJ Blackwall Guns, a long way from Germany and even a step from Scotland. It is located in Oxfordshire. RJ Blackwall is a Mauser flagship store. This morning, Rupert's hoping to use a different kind of Mauser, an M12 Max with a thumbhole stock on a row dough. He is being guided by outfitting Supremo Owen Bidsmore of Service UK. We've been out for about an hour and uh, well, nothing's really been moving. All the row that we've seen, which is what we're after, um, those or kids are, um, are all lying down in cover. So just picked away along this hedge line and there was a, a, a doe and a kid laid up, which uh, we've bumped, and they just left the field, unfortunately. So. He doesn't seem to matter where you are in the country or whatever the season. Roe are feeling bashful. Should see something surely soon, because well, it's breakfast fa- time now. Roe yeah. are been... famous for not getting out of bed too early <laughs> some days, aren't they? So, I could uh, do with bacon and eggs yeah. now. <laughs> we've already been out for an hour, and um, we've seen very little uh, and anything that we've seen we've seen probably three or four row and one month jack the keeper's just been round and topped up his feeders and we found a quite a nice vantage point and hopefully we're going to see some action in a few minutes eventually rupert has a shot and doe is down Rupert's just um, had a good shot on a rodo and um, I saw through the binoculars it took the bullet very well. The, the reaction wasn't be what I expected from uh, the ammunition I use a lot of which is a Hornady SST because I would expect it to put it down on the spot but it took a good strike, kicked off and ran and I'm expecting to find it just within the wood. So what are you actually shooting with Rupert? So uh, 308 calibre um, in an RWS green right. and um, these these green bullets uh, uh, are going to be seen more and more over the next few years, especially uh, the Forestry Commission and people like that are starting to go away from non-lead bullets. Well, I've just come back from Germany and we had to use them in the National Forest there. And I was using a GMX form of the bullet I was very pleased with, so I'm, I'm interested to see this new, new bullet. So this bullet um, is a, it's made of tin um, it, it, and it works, if you're familiar with RWS, RWS do have a bullet called the DK and it it almost works identically to the DK but it's constructed with a different material because obviously it's lighter so it's a flatter shooting so uh, with the 308 you've got a, it, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, you haven't got the drop so much. With what the weight is it? It's 136 grain. 136, oh wow. So but it will hit like a 150. Right, let's go and have a look. Yeah, perfect. So 95 metres later, we've got a good strike here, good blood, plenty of hair, plenty of pins, and um, it's jumped off this way, there's there's another huge squirt of blood there, this deer won't have gone far at all. In fact, I think you can just about see the back of it inside the wood now. That's um, an unusual stock for a Mauser, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is the M12 Max. Max is a, a thumbhole version and gives a lot of control, stability. Yep. And Mauser keep certain originality, so they've gone slightly more modern with the stock, but they still keep like a traditional three position safe. Yep. So you've got the, the ability to unload the rifle on safe. Yep. And you've also been a slightly more modern Mauser. They've got a detachable magazine as well, which just right. help for reloading and unloading. And the trigger pull on, on this modern Mauser is one pound ten ounces. Great shot um, with your green bullets. <laughs> and, um, and well, what's it done? 25, 30 meters. Huge blood trail, perfect for us, and a perfect one. Uh, for the larder and for the cool sheet and uh, I'm very happy with that and it's been a pleasure to stop with you. Thank you ever so much. Over the last two years the Mauser M12 range has come a long way and is used by carnivores all over the country. For more information about the Mauser range go to blazersporting.com Well thank you Baron, thank you Rupert, thank you Owen, thank you Louise, thank you to everybody who took part in that film. Now from Row to the wider world of Quarry on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting the YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. There is lots on coyotes this week. Swagger Bipods, which of course uses Swagger Bipods, is out after the predators in the US state of Wyoming and calls one into 30 yards. Americans are good at having dreams. For some it's equality, for others it's a spring creek and a bottle of bourbon. For Dorothy it's about a land called Oz. For hunters it's often the buck of a lifetime. And here is the story of one such buck from Mojo Outdoors, and it's in Kansas. The US duck hunting season has seen lots of limits this year. If you don't know what a limit is, it's a good thing. And here is one of the quickest. Freelance duck hunting is decoying them. UK sporting agent William Powell has put up two shooting films this week, one of them about driven partridge shooting in Spain. Ever fancied thrush hunting? It's big in the Mediterranean countries. Here is Hobby Cathar's channel going out from Madrid for a day after Thor Zalev, as they call them. Nick Ridley has cocker spaniels with the same breeding as mine, so forgive me if I include his latest rough shooting pheasants near Evesham in Gloucestershire. Red moose hunting is well underway with its driven hunt series is filmed in Sweden and in English episode 7 features deer and wild boar in Östergötland south of Stockholm. And finally in New Zealand Wild Game NZ puts up a spring hunting film about a lad's trip into the hills including deer stalking and Canada goose stalking. That's it for this week I have put all these films into a playlist for you click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8 email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well, that's it for this week. If you have not done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can even pop your email into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.